This video is an introduction to working directly with a database using the MySQL command line in PHP MyAdmin. In your browser, first of all, navigate to localhost forward slash PHP MyAdmin. Notice that in the left hand panel there are a number of databases already listed Information Schema, MySQL Performance Schema, PHP MyAdmin, and WebAuth. These are all system databases and should be left alone, so don't click on any of these. We can do everything there is to do with our databases in PHP MyAdmin by clicking on buttons, as I said earlier. And we'll do some of the tasks this way and others using the command line so that you learn to write MySQL queries. So far, we have no favorite movies database, so we'll begin by creating a new one. Click on SQL at the top of the page to bring up the SQL query window. We'll make a new database called Movies. The command for this couldn't be easier. Type in Create Database Movies and click on Go. The new Movies database will appear alongside the system databases in the left hand panel. Click on its name and you'll get the message No tables found in database because so far the database is empty. The first time we create a table, we'll take the easy option and use the PHP MyAdmin user interface. In the name box, type in the table name Movies and in number of columns put 3. Click on Go. and you'll be confronted with a grid into which you must enter the names of the fields for the table. For the first field, enter the name movie underscore ID. Every table will have an ID field containing the unique number I told you about in the previous lesson, which serves if everything else is identical to distinguish one record from another. Next, we need to tell the database what type of data this field will contain. Clicking on the question mark next to Type will take you to the MySQL Reference Manual for Data Types, where you can find more information on data types. For this field, which will be the primary index for this table, we will choose Int for integer. In the next box, give it a length of 11. Scroll over to the right until you get to Index and choose Primary. This will make the database use this as its main index and will speed up queries. Move your mouse over the abbreviation AI above the next box and you'll see that it stands for Auto Increment. This means that each time a new record is added, the ID number assigned to it will automatically increase by 1. This has the effect that no index number can ever appear more than once, ensuring that even if two titles and descriptions are exactly the same, no two records can ever be identical. Check this. Then go to the next field and assign it a name of title and the type varchar. Varchar stands for variable character. This data types for variable length character strings, which can be a mixture of letters and numbers. This is the most commonly used data type for strings. Varchar has to be assigned a maximum string length. Let's assume none of our titles will be longer than 256 characters and assign it a length of 255 because we start counting at zero. Leave the rest of the options for title empty and repeat the process for the third field, description. Click Save, and you'll get a confirmation message that the table has been created. Click on the table name, and you'll be taken to the Structure view, where you can see the names and the types of the fields that we've just created. Now follow the same procedure to create the two other tables we need, Moviegoers and Favourites. First of all, click on Movies on the left to get into the Movies database. And then you should see, you should have the structure view there with the movies table visible, and you're creating a new table alongside that. Moviegoers consists of three fields, user ID, 
which is an auto incrementing primary index, just as we did before. And two varchar fields, first name and last name. Give both of these a maximum length of 40. That should be more than enough for any name. And click on Save. The Favourites table consists of two fields, User ID and Movie ID, both of which are integers and which cannot be empty. For this we'll use int as the type and don't click on the Null checkbox because we do not want to allow any empty values. We need to allow duplicates for these, so don't click on Auto Increment this time. Now we have our three tables set up, but they're all empty. There are no records in them. In the next video, we'll learn how to add data to tables.